Well, hello, Bethel. It's so great to be with you here tonight, and uh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, especially since I don't have to preach long. It's even better. <laughs> I, I just want us to encounter Jesus tonight, huh? I know we already have, but let's just encounter him afresh again. And I, I, my, my heart for you tonight is that we just walk out of this place just with a open to a fresh reality of him in you and you in him, and that we just go from this place tonight just possessed afresh by Jesus. Amen? Oh, man, I can't wait. Now, I've got a couple of things here I just want to quickly uh, bring to your attention. Is Most of the, the two of the books that I had this morning are, so, uh, are gone, they're completely sold out. There's the, still the workbook there. This is a $25 book. Now, listen to this because I'm only going to say it once, right? And I don't want you fighting. This is a $25 workbook on the Walking in Supernatural Healing Power. The book is sold out. You can get the book on Amazon, right? But there's, there's six of these left, right? Now, here's what I'm going to do. It's $25. The other book I have is, is The Perfect Gift, right? How many of you know someone that has special needs in their family? Right, pretty much all of us, right? If, if you will buy this for someone tonight, I'm going to give you yours for free. Okay, so it's a $17.95 book. You're going to get two for $17.95. The first six get that for free as well. All right, so you're getting $40. You're getting $60, about $65 a book for $17.95. All right, it's only for the first six because when they're gone. All right, and then you're going to get these two. You buy one of these for free. Now, there only, there's only one condition. If I show up at your house and you've got two sitting on your bookshelf, I'm going to spank you. <laughs> all right, one's to give away to a family with special needs. All right, does that sound like a good, fair deal? I know that's a little different to what I told you. He's the iPad guy that controls it. And I told him what I'm going to do, and then I just told you something different. It's like, that's why you've got to have good interns. They've got to be sharp. All right, you guys ready? You know, this morning, how many of you here this morning? Who, who was not here? Why not? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I spoke this morning on striving into rest. I've been diligent and in striving into rest that I'm not going to fight. I'm going to I'm going to just strive into rest. I'm not going to fight for victory. I fight from victory, but I'm going to strive into rest and the power that comes with striving into rest. And I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you is because if I was really only allowed to share one message in my life and it's probably really the only message that I am sharing these days it just kind of comes in a slightly different package. But if there's only one message that I was allowed to, allowed to share in my life, or they just told me I'm only allowed to be watch one message for the whole year, that message would be union with God. It's really the only thing that I preach. And it says in Galatians 2.20, it says, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. It's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. See, I, I want to propose to you something that, Perhaps the cross is the greatest mass murderer in all of history. I, I don't know that Jesus came to save us. I think he came to kill us. Because at the cross, the I in you died, and you're co-resurrected as we, that you and him became one. And I tell you, when we begin to understand that, see, this morning, this, this afternoon, this evening, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm so possessed, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> this evening, my heart for you is that you would just capture a fresh revelation of what it is to be possessed by Jesus, that the I became we, that there is no longer I that lives, but you and him became one. See, if we could catch a revelation of that, is that we're at union with God. Please don't come to me and say, well, I'm not a feeler. It's like, well, neither am I. <laughs> but you weren't called to be a believer. You're called to be a believer. 
And I, I just love to enjoy practicing the presence. I love to enjoy practicing my union with God. Is that though I don't feel it, I can sit there. I'm not a feeler. I'm a knower. I can read my Bible and say, well, if that says it, I believe it. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to sit, I sit there and I just say, Father, I thank you that I'm one with you. I know I don't feel it. I'm not the feeler. And some of you are seers and you look around and see angels. I see paint on the wall. But I can sit there and I go, Father, you and I are one at the cross. That's what happens through the cross and repentance and salvation is that I became one with him, that the I became we. See, how possessed can you be by Jesus? How possessed and how sold out can we be by, can we be by Jesus? Because I don't want to go through the routines of just doing church because church isn't my savior, Jesus is. And I, I spoke this morning about striving into rest. How much this coming year am I able to strive and walk into that place of rest? And I spoke about those that weren't here. Mark chapter 4, when Jesus is in the boat, the disciples were freaking out. They lost their peace. Jesus is at complete rest. And we all only have authority in the storm and the storm we can sleep in. See, what storm are you sleeping in? Because you're aware of your union with him. It's not that the storms don't calm. The storm came and hit the boat, the same boat the disciples are in, the same boat that hit Jesus, that Jesus had the storm around him, but the storm didn't come inside him. How possessed are you by Jesus? My prayer would be is that our eyes would be open to the reality of who he is, of who he is in us and who he is through us. In, in uh, February last year, See, I've been practicing this abiding in the union with God. Of like, God, I know you're with me. I know you're in me. It's me and you, and it's you and me. It's, we're one. It's no longer I and you, it's we. And we, we are in Japan. I don't go anywhere alone these days. Some of you got that. <laughs> And we're in, we're in Japan, and I just ministered at a, I go there every year. And I just ministered at this wonderful church that I just love to go to, and it's in Tokyo. And I just, I just preached a message on the woman with the issue of blood. See, what if the laying on of hands was a secondary anointing? Which I believe it is. I, I'm not against it. I'm all in for it. But what if the laying on of hands is a secondary anointing because Jesus couldn't do many miracles in Nazareth except where he laid hands on a few? What if we became so possessed like Jesus that when we walk into a room that people begin to get healed because you walked in? Not because you laid hands on them, but because you begin to smell like Jesus and you walk in and they begin to like, wow, what is that? Who are you? And I just preached this message on the woman of the issue of blood because the woman comes up behind Jesus. Jesus never laid hands on her. The woman comes up behind Jesus and touches the hem of his garment, and it's like a pickpocket reflex. I don't think he stopped to heal her. He stopped to get the testimony because she was already healed when she touched the hem of his garment. See, I wonder how much we can see in us and how much we can see through us by coming, by not using our faith for healing, but using faith to recognize the one that lives in us. And the pastor says to me, he goes, we're going to, this is, this is directly after, I'm going to tell you about my day, but I'm going to start at the end of the day and work backwards. See, the pastor says to me, um, he said, I, I just preached the message on healing, you know, laying hands on the, ha on the sec secondary anointing that we become you're just full of Jesus. It was not this message on the woman of the issue of blood. And the pastor says to me, tonight I've got a special treat for you. He said, after church, he said, I'm going to take you to a nice restaurant that you're going to really enjoy. And we get in his, we get in his car and we drive across Tokyo and he pulls me in the front of this, 
this restaurant and I knew I was in for a treat when I saw the sign at the front. And we walk into this restaurant and I take one look at the menu and I knew I was in for a treat when my steak cost me 600 US dollars. That's all right, it wasn't church money that paid for it. <laughs> it's called revival on a plate. It was, and I, I'm sitting in this restaurant and I'm just, I, I'm practicing union with God. It doesn't mean I sit there and, oh. <laughs> I'm just sitting there and I'm just being full of Jesus and I'm recognizing the one that lives in me. And the waiter comes out and he takes the pastor orders for me. And the waiter goes away and the waiter comes, he comes, uh, he comes back with my steak and he puts my steak down in front of me and he says to me, here we go, sir, it's your steak. It's a very fancy restaurant. We have, we have one cook and three waiters for three of us. And he puts the steak down and he puts the steak down in front of me and he says, Here we go, sir. And I hear the Lord say, Would you join him? Or would you ask him if he could if you if he would join you in the giving thanks for the food? Now I, I'm not I'm not an evangelist. It's not my primary office, and I'm definitely not a pastor. Hmm. I love people, I just don't like them all the time. <laughs> And I, I'm so excited about my steak. I'm like, oh, God, I'd rather eat my steak. <laughs> but I'm going to be obedient. And I, I, I get it all around the wrong order. And I, I, I reach up and I hold the man's hand. Right? I hadn't asked him if we can say grace. I just find myself holding his hand. And, <laughs> and, he, and he looks at me like, Gives me this strange look, and I kind of look back at him as like, it's okay, I'm from California, this is normal. <laughs> and I said, would you just join us in the giving thanks for the food? I, mean, I don't know this waiter. It's just this random waiter at a random restaurant across the other side of Tokyo from where the church was. And he said, yes, okay, that's fine. So I just want to pray this fast prayer because I want to eat my steak. Father, thank you for this food. Thank you. I got my eyes closed. Thank you for this food. Thank you for this restaurant. Thank you for this waiter. And God, let your, let your blessing be upon him. And I'm getting ready to say amen, and my arm starts shaking like this. It's, getting, it's my left arm. It's getting, it just goes wild. I mean, it wasn't me shaking it. It was him shaking it. My arm's shaking, and I think, what the heck's he doing? And I wake up, and he's convulsing like crazy. He's shaking back and forth. He bursts into tears. He falls to the floor on his knees, flops under the table, and he starts howling like a baby. Like, I mean, he's wailing out loud. I'm so embarrassed because I'm thinking, you're going to lose your job, dude. Like, this is a flash restaurant, and you are wailing everybody, including your boss, can hear you right now. I mean, he's under there, and he's wailing out loud. And I didn't know what to do. Because I'm not an evangelist. <laughs> and I, so I just extended grace a little longer, Right? I just keep praying because I thought I've got to work out if I finish grace, he's going to get up and it's going to, I really don't know what to do. So I'm just going to keep praying. Like, Father, we bless Tokyo and we bless, you know, like, we bless his wife and we bless, you know. It's like, and he's sobbing under the table in Jesus' name. And I'm looking to the pastor as to say, like, is this normal in Japan? And he gave me a look back as to say, you did it, you fix it. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm like, oh, great, now what do I do? And he comes out from under the table and he's on his knees beside me. He's shaking and he's crying. And I'm like, bless you, bless you, bless you, my friend. In other words, go away, I want to eat my steak. <laughs> And he walks out, and you hear him the whole way to the kitchen, the whole way out. And I turn to the pastor, and I'm like, what do we do now? I said, well, you got to help me. And, and I said, I don't know what to do next. And he goes, 
Neither do I. And before we could come to any kind of conclusion, he's back with the pastor's steak. And I open my big fat mouth and I say, um, is this something you need prayer for? And he goes, well, there is. And he starts wailing again. And I'm like, well, what do you need prayer for? And he goes, my, my wife can't conceive. All as we've ever wanted is to have babies, and she can't have babies. Now, he doesn't know I'm a pastor, right? He's just opening his life up. She just, we just want to have babies. And I'm like, oh, come over here. Come stand right there. And he comes and stands beside me, and I said, my friend, babies are God's idea. And he goes, how do you know that? I said, because the Bible says, go forward and multiply. I just I didn't tell him this next bit, but I tell you, just and I'm not politically correct. That's why I hold two passports, so if it gets too much, I can disappear. <laughs> I'm a dual citizen. It doesn't say go forward and subtract. It says go forward and multiply. And he goes, does it? And I'm like, yes, it does. It says go forward and multiply. Babies are God's idea. It's going to be okay. How do you know that? And I'm like, because the word of God says. I said, go forward and multiply. And I said, Father, just give them. I said, what's your desire? Oh, I have a baby. And I'm like, that's God's desire then. And he goes, oh. I said, I don't know what you're still doing here if you believe that. <laughs> Come on, faith needs an action. You know, get her done. Like. And he walks me to the door of the restaurant and he goes, would you just hug me? This is Japan. They don't do this in Japan. You know, like, they're pretty like, I didn't say they're nasty. I just, uh, serious. They are the most loving people. He goes, would you just hug me? And I'm like, yeah. And I hug him and he's, Whoa! and I'm like, okay, go home. That's enough. Go home. I leave the restaurant. I want to jump to the beginning of the day. I'm going to share a verse and we're going to close. See, the beginning of the day, we get up and, and uh, I, I, I'm a, I fast a lot. Right? Not, not for spiritual reasons. I just, I just 16 eight. I fast 16 hours every day, eat eight. And uh, so I'm in my fasting mode. I generally fast to lunchtime every day from 6 p.m. to like 10 to 11 to 12. And I take a taxi to church. And the, I've got the pastor. He comes by in the taxi and he picks me up and we drive the rest of the way to church. And the traffic's, the traffic's really busy. And he says, oh, I think we should just get out and walk the last, it was probably 400 yards, 500 yards. And I'm like, yeah, let's just do that. And we walk past a coffee shop, and I, I don't want, I don't want, I, my body, my body clock was all messed up, right? And I'm, because, you know, dealing with jet lag and stuff, and I'm like, I think it's dinner time, it's breakfast time, it's like, it's my eat time. And I'm like, I, I want, I want food, I need food. And we walk past this coffee shop, I mean, I'm, I'm a self-professed coffee snob. You should, in the coffee shop this afternoon, I got behind the counter and made sure he was making my coffee right. <laughs> I did, right? I mean, I got right in there. And it's like he gave me a little demonstration of his machine. And like, I'm like, yep, I need one of those for home. And so I, 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 I'm in the, I go past this coffee shop, but it's a, it's a coffee shop that I just refuse to drink coffee at, right? Not because I disagree with their beliefs. I just hate their coffee, and I'm not going to tell you what coffee shop it is, except it's a green coffee shop. <laughs> and I'm like, so I go to look in the window to see if there's any food, but it's reflective glass. I can't see a thing. So me and my stupidity, I come right up to the glass and I'm like, 
and I'm looking right into the eyes about two inches away of a woman on the other side, eyeball to eyeball. And I'm like, I, I'm an introvert. I'm like, I mean, that's an introvert's worst nightmare. I'm like, whoa, whoa, how embarrassing. And I turned to the pastor and I said, pastor? And he goes, yes. I'm like, there's a woman on the other side. And he goes, yes. I'm like, looking right in my eyes, like right there. And he goes, oh. I said, she's a white woman. She's not a Japanese woman. She's a white woman. I said, this is very embarrassing for me. I said, I would hate her to think that I'm checking her out. I wasn't. I was looking at food. I said, I've got to fix this. And he goes, okay. And I said, I'm going to go in and apologize. And he goes, okay. I, I walk into this coffee shop and I, this green coffee shop. I, I walk up behind her, and I, I, I tap her on the shoulder. I pluck up the courage, and I tap her on the shoulder. I said, excuse me, ma'am. And she turns around, and she goes, huh. <laughs> yes, Chris Gore? And I'm like, huh. <laughs> Not only does she think I'm checking her out, she thinks Chris Gore's checking her out. <laughs> I'm like, this is terrible. And I'm like, how do you know me? And she goes, I'm a New Zealander that lives in Australia that's here on a skiing holiday. My brother broke his foot and he's in hospital. We're waiting for a medical clearance before we can fly home. And I got nothing to do except drink coffee in the green shop. And I'm like, huh. Oh. I, I said, I, I, I wasn't looking at you. I was looking at the food. I just want to make sure you're aware of that. And she goes, I, I figured that. I said, I figured that. And I said, and she goes, but listen. She said, I can't get pregnant. She said, could you just pray for that? She said, I've had miscarriage after miscarriage. I think it was seven. She goes, can you just pray for me for a miscarriage? And I'm like, oh, of course. I said, of course I'll pray for a baby. I said, because babies are God's idea. And, she, and I said, the Bible says that they're God's idea. And she goes, yeah. And I said, I declare over you no more miscarriages. I said, now get on a plane. Her husband was in Australia. I said, get on a plane, you get home. Faith needs an action. <laughs> I went back to Japan the following year, which was last year, 2019. And I was in uh, Austria the week before, Austria, Europe. Salzburg, talk about jet lag, whiplash, like <laughs> I fly the way back to California for a couple of days and then onto onto Austria, uh, onto Japan. And I get an email from the Japanese steakhouse man on Facebook. He sends me a Facebook message and he goes, <laughs> he said, here's the photo of my baby. <laughs> my wife conceived, she, we conceived and my baby's born and it's funny, he's my Facebook friend now, and that's the only thing I hardly, about the only thing I see come up in my feed from him is like, baby photo, baby photo, baby photo, baby photo, baby photo. It's like, I'm sick of seeing baby photos. <laughs> it's just baby photos of his baby. He's just had the one first year birthday, and you know, it's just like, baby photo, baby photo. And so I, and I'm like, I'm gonna buy him a gift. So I bought him a gift in Austria to take to Japan. And he said, I'm going to come, I said, I'm going to come find you to give you the gift. And he goes, I'm going to find you. Long story short, he comes to church and gives his life to Jesus. He put his hand up 40 times for salvation in one message. <laughs> then he'd stand up and he was like, he didn't want to miss out. But when I landed in Japan, I turn on, you know how you got to have your phone off, and I turn on in airplane mode, and I turn it into airplane mode, off into normal mode, and boom, an email downloads from the lady in the green shop with a photo of her baby. <laughs> See, how possessed are you by Jesus? How aware are we of our union with him? 
because the more I become aware of the union with him, though I don't feel it because I'm not a feeler. If you are, awesome. Pray for me later. But I'm not the feeler, but I'm a knower because I know what the word says, that we're at union with him. How possessed are you? I want to share a verse and we're, and then we're going we're gonna to just, just do some ministry or something. We'll see how we go. But it's, it's a fascinating story in the book of Mark, chapter 5. And the story in Mark 5 talks about the man who's demon-possessed. And I, I don't want to read the whole story. You can read it for your, yourself in your own time. But, but I'll just give you a few little highlights here. It says the man's demon-possessed. It says the man dwells among the tombstones. Right, this guy's crazy. Right, he's bound and he's shackled in chains. He sits there and he cuts himself with stones. Right, and he's and no one can tame him, and he's running around naked. Right, you got the picture. How many of you need your mind cleans now? <laughs> He's running around naked, cutting himself with stones, shackled, acting like a maniac. And he comes to Jesus, and he says, he runs to Jesus to worship him, and he says, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And Jesus sets the man free. The man gets completely set free. And these are just a couple of quick points I'm going to bring out. Are you guys ready? And we're going to wrap this up. Because I, I believe tonight that God wants to possess us afresh. Trust me, I'm possessed, but I want my eyes open to the reality of what more I have. It's like, how possessed in 2020 can I get? I just found myself wandering away there with Jesus. I'm like, what's possible? What is possible? How possessed can I get? How full can I get with Jesus? How full can I get that, uh, that I would see more of what I call those accidental miracles that you just walk into a building and people get healed, people get pregnant? Don't take, don't take this out of context for the viewers watching TV, but my wife said I'm getting pretty good at getting other ladies pregnant. I get photos emailed to me all the time. You pray for me, I couldn't get pregnant. Here's a photo of my baby. It's like I just get baby photos, baby photos, baby photos come through all the time. See, the, the, woman, the, the man is entirely possessed and Jesus sets him free. See, these are the questions that I ask myself. I, ask, I told you that this morning. I ask myself questions that the Bible tells us that he was instantly dressed. He's dressed and in his right mind. See, this is the question I ask myself. Where did he get his clothes from? I, I think that Jesus instantly dressed him in an apostolic mandate. He is instantly converted into an apostolic mandate of go and plant a church, set the sick free. See, and as I, as I read this story, there's these couple of observations here. It says this. It says that when the people saw the man dressed and in his right mind, they became afraid. Think about this. They're not afraid of him running around naked. Demon possessed, shackled, acting like a crazy man, cutting himself, <laughs> and they're not afraid. He shows up in his right mind, dressed, and they're afraid. See, here's my thought. I think it's time that the world begins to fear God because of his goodness. Five of you agree. I, I do. I think it's time that the world begins to fear God because of his goodness. 
that because he's so good that we get the revelation of how good he is because we're so possessed by Jesus that when we walk into a room, we begin to shift an atmosphere just because we walked in. And the sick start getting set free. The demoniac start getting set free. People start coming to Jesus because they see the power of the gospel. I tell you, my friends, I love the power of the gospel. And some people have got more faith in the return of Jesus than they do in the power of the gospel. I love the power of the gospel. And I think it's time that as a body, we come back to the simplicity of understanding the power of the gospel, of the mystery of the gospel. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. See, I, 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 I just don't want to do, I don't want to just do church anymore. I, I didn't say I'm not going to go to church. <laughs> Please don't read, misunderstand that. I go to church like 400 times a year. I, I live my life in church. I preach 400 times this last year. I spend my life in church, but I don't want to go through just doing another meeting for the sake of doing a meeting. I go to do a meeting that I would get more possessed by Jesus, that I would get you more possessed by Jesus, that we would come out of that place filled with the power of the gospel, more aware of who he is in us, that because I took time to look at his face, I look into his eyes, that when I see those eyes of fire of the way that he burns for people and the way that he loves people that I know that, that it's him and li that lives in me it's like walking into that place and letting the tiger out of the cage it's time that the world begins to fear him because he's so good see our faith can only extend to the level that we're aware of his goodness how good do you think he is how good do you think your father is? See, this year, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to strive and to rest and be possessed by Jesus. That's about sums up my year. See, here's a thought. We're told that the demoniac's atmosphere affected the cities and regions around him. the demonic spirit that he carried affected cities. My friend, how much more can we affect cities around us if we became possessed by the spirit of God? I'd like to suggest that perhaps if we're not, maybe he's become greater than the one that lives in us. Because we should be affecting our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our restaurants, our supermarkets, just not walking around being weird, <sighs> just walking around about going about our business and we just walk in to the Japanese steakhouse and someone flops under the table. <laughs> Let's stand together. Can they have the worship team come? I want us to, I want us to lift our hands across this room, and I, I just, I want us to encounter Jesus tonight. We're gonna, we'll minister to the sick at the end. It's like, I, I'm in no hurry because he's a now God. He's gonna be, he's here now, and he's here in five minutes, and he's here in ten minutes. He's, he's now God. It's not like I got this little window that I've got to make sure I minister within. It's like, otherwise he goes home because he's tired. See, how possessed are you by Jesus? How possessed do you want to be by Jesus? See, John, I think it's John 3, 34, it says, the spirit is given without measure. I have people come to me and they're like, give me the double portion. And I'm like, you're selling yourself short. I, I don't want a double portion. I'm just being honest. I don't want a double portion. I want the spirit without measure. 
I don't want twice of Jesus in me. I want all of Jesus. And I tell you tonight, there's, there's people here and you're like, oh, I just give you my heart. My friend, he doesn't want your heart. That's part of you. He wants your life. He wants your whole life. Now, I, I, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how this next bit's going to work, but let's just see how we go. If, if that's you, that something has resonating inside you that you'd say, yeah, I, I, I'm just sick of doing the motions of church. Like, I, I want to be possessed afresh. I, I want to be filled with Jesus. I don't want the double portion. I want the Spirit without measure. That you would say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me because I don't want to walk into another week just going about the same routine. I actually want to make an impact in society. We're going to spend some time in worship. If that's you, I want you to get to the front. You get to the front. We're going to worship. Let's lift our hands across this place. I, I believe that the Lord is going to do something tonight. I, I believe that if you're serious about this, He's going to come and He's going to fill you. And He's going to touch you. And He's going to possess you afresh. I know you've already got Him. But my prayer would be is that your eyes would be open to the reality of the more. There is always more. Come on, let's lift our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to put the name of Jesus on your lips. You tell him, you tell him in your own words how hungry you are. I want, I want the ministry team to help me in just a few minutes and my team. You tell him, just begin to put Jesus on your lips. Say, Father, pray this out with me together. Father, come and possess me afresh. I want more of you. I don't want to go through just the routines of another day and another week. I ask that you would possess me afresh, that you would fill me afresh, that there'd be no room for anything else in my life except you. Come on, let's lift our hands and let's, let's begin to worship. Come on, let's just spend a little bit of time on worship with our hands raised. Let's pour out our heart of worship to Jesus. Ask Him to come and fill your fresh.
just you and God. It's just you and God. I want you to pour out your heart like there's nobody else in the room except you and the Father. You're looking into His eyes. You're looking into His eyes. And His eyes are fire. I'm looking back at you. And He's coming and He's coming to fill you. He's coming to touch you. you to the best of your ability to practice the presence. I, I want you to the best of your ability is to is to practice union with him. Put your hands out in front of you and I just I want you to become aware of the hope of glory that lives inside you. I, I don't know if you realize this but separation is an illusion. There is no separation from God for the life of the believer. You're at union with Him. You are one with Him. You are at peace with Him. You are one with God. You are at union with Him. Stop trying to find Him and look inside to discover what you've already got. Are you ready? Just begin to practice union. Don't be distracted by what's happening next to you or in front of you or behind you. Like it's his eyes on Jesus moment. Hands out in front. Practice union. Practice union. Practice union with him. Become aware of him. It is no longer I that lives. John 15, I am the vine, you are the branch. Why are we trying to become something that Jesus says you already are? You're not nail gun to the vine. You are not stapled to the vine. You're not glued to the vine. You are grafted into the vine that the vine and the branch became one. 